Hi folks, this is Ali Nessa and I'm joined today by Grace. Grace, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. So Grace is a pre-doc student interested in uh, dentistry and possibly, who knows, maybe down the line in endodontics. And uh, she's doing internship here with us. And Grace, you had an interesting question that I figured would be probably worth making a little video uh, for our audience. Of course, the question is a little bit on the basic side, but some of the dental students and possibly even some patients might be interested in an answer to this question. Uh, so what was your question? Um, what is a root canal? <laughs> Of course. So what is a root canal um, is clearly something that um, every patient that walks into our office uh, knows, but of course there's a lot of misconceptions about it. Everybody has a certain answer. Sometimes people say, well, root canal therapy is removing the nerve. Some people say it's removing the roots, but it's actually none of those. It's a little bit more complicated, which is partially why a lot of dentists just kind of give a simple easy answer by saying well you have pain we're going to remove the nerve and you're going to feel better but that's really not what's going on so expand on the topic and since you are a uh, kind of a science student you understand a little bit of science I'm not going to keep it too basic and I'm going to use some of the terms that are going to be simple to understand but also get into more detail than I would normally explain to the average patient so let's see if I could do this okay all right guys so a tooth is obviously made up of a crown portion, which is the part that you see in the mouth, and then a root portion. And it's almost like an iceberg if you think about it, if these are the gums. This is the part that you see, but just like a telephone pole, you need to have something underneath the ground to stabilize this, and that's what the root is for. And inside, the, the way the root forms is it forms from the outside in as the tooth erupts up, and a portion of tissue gets caught, kind of tangled in the middle of the root, and that tissue that's in the middle of the tooth, if you think of this as closing this way as the root and trapping tissue in the middle, this tissue is called the pulp tissue. It's not the nerve, it's called the pulp tissue. Okay. It contains some nerves, but it contains a lot of other things, a bunch of other cells. And under normal circumstance, this tissue, like anything that's underneath the gum, here is sterile, okay? okay. The tooth contains this enamel surface and dentin and root, and there's also live cells on the outside surface of the root, which is called cementum, okay? And then you have these fibers that attach the tooth to the bone, and that's basically how you get a little bit, almost like a trampoline, the tooth is kind of moving inside the jawbone, and that's what stays, uh, that keeps the tooth in place and gives you sensation during chewing. Now. Sometimes, remember outside here is a sea of bacteria, right? Inside your oral cavity you have, uh, you know, basically over a thousand species of different kinds of bacteria that have been found here. Part of the digestive system, and we all know that your digestive system, starting from the mouth all the way to the end, is, uh, you know, fairly uh, laden with bacteria and different microbes. Also fungus and even viruses and things like that. But sometimes due to I'm not saying that you, but some people not <laughs> brushing, they end up getting a little bit of a, uh, uh, decalcification of the enamel due to acids and also acids in the diet as well as acids that are produced by the bacteria that end up creating a little bit of erosion and caries, it's what's called caries, that then over time extend and move towards the sterile space called the pulp. What ends up happening over time is when bacteria from the oral cavity, this is the same kind of bacteria from the decay, end up getting into the space that is sterile otherwise, you end up having the same reaction you get anywhere else in the body whenever you have bacteria penetrate this barrier. Okay, if you have a cut in your skin and you get bacteria in here, you end up getting what's called inflammation. So here you get the same thing. Remember, there's vasculature that runs here. There's a blood vessel as well as a nerve and everything that runs and goes up here. So you end up getting inflammation inside the space. The difference between this space and this area here, the same amount of bacteria produce the same type of inflammation, except that here you have a tissue that can expand, plus you have blood vessels from every direction that can bring in inflammatory cells, including white blood cells, to help kill and re remove this bacteria. And that's why very often, unless somebody is immune compromised, this can easily be resolved, okay? However, here what you have is you have a space that is encased in hard tissue. 
This happens in two other places in the body as well, or a total of three. You have inside the tooth, you have under the nail bed, as well as inside the calvarium, where tissue is basically encased in heart structure. So any amount of inflammation, as you've ever had a misfortune of getting your nail bed under, you know, in a car door or something like that, stuck in a car door, that is a really painful situation. So that, as well as any kind of inflammation inside the, the head, these are all painful processes, including a toothache. So okay. what ends up happening is the body tries to bring in uh, uh, white blood cells to kill off this bacteria. And it ends up, because there is a constant source being supplied from the top in terms of the decay, the body ends up losing that battle and bacteria overwhelms this tissue inside here and you get what's called necrosis, which is the death of the pulp tissue, which is the tissue that's insi inside here. Okay. At that point, the, you have bacteria living inside the space that it acts as a nest. That's why when you have a tooth that has had, you know, a, um, um, a necrosis of the pulp tissue, you have this what was colloquially called as a dead tooth, right? Okay. But there's the tooth itself is not dead, obviously. That's a misnomer again. It's another one of those uses because don't forget the tooth as a whole still has live cells here in its cementum that are attached to the tooth itself, okay? And all that's happened in a tooth that is necrotic is just the tissue that's inside this little tiny um, hair thin structure has died. So what ends up happening now is that you need to uh, get rid of this bacteria because the bacteria moves its way down to the end of the root and starts to shoot out into additional sterile spaces which is this area at the end of the root which is the bone. Okay, And what you end up getting is you end up getting what's called an abscess. Okay, An abscess is basically a periapical abscess or, a, or an apical abscess, which is basically a collection of uh, white blood cells and bacteria and inflammatory cells that are just kind of encased in this area. Anyway, so how do we get rid of this? The goal of root canal therapy now, see, when we say you have a root canal, everybody has a root canal. Root canal space is what, you know, is the space that anatomically is there. Right. It's root canal therapy that is the treatment to get rid of a problem that is initiated inside here and is now causing an infection outside the root, okay? okay? So for root canal therapy, what we do is we end up making, so first of all, how do we get rid of the bacteria that's in here? You have two options. One would, we have to get rid of the bacteria that's inside the root or somehow prevent it from reaching outside the root, okay? okay. You can either remove the whole tooth, which will remove the tooth as well as these other live cells, which is the cementum, as well as the bacteria that's inside the root, that's an extraction. That'll basically remove the source of this bacteria, and then all of a sudden, this is no different than this abscess here, and that'll get taken care of, okay? okay? So what the difference is in root canal therapy, we try to remove the bacteria from inside the tooth without removing the tooth itself, okay? And that's root canal therapy, which is a series of techniques and kind of a, uh, skills that have been developed over the years to address the ability to get rid of this bacteria from inside the tooth and cork and close the root end so nothing gets out. Once that area is corked closed, okay, then this again, this abscess is going to be just like this abscess will be taken care of. Okay. So, we make a little opening on top of the tooth. We use these little instruments that are, you can think of them as small uh, bottle brushes. Okay, it's microscopic bottle brushes, and we go and they come in different sizes. And what we do is we go and in this process, we enlarge the space, we scrape the walls, and we scrape it clean. We use disinfecting irrigants and disinfectants to wash out and remove all the debris and the bacteria that is inside this tooth. Now, do we completely sterilize this space? No, but you can, sometimes you can sterilize it, but sometimes you can't, but it doesn't matter. Again, remember, if there is some bacteria inside the root here, it will, as long as you have a good apical seal and that bacteria is all dead and is filled with this filling material, this is really no different than the bacteria that's outside. Remember, the goal is to prevent bacteria from getting into the bone, okay. right? So the key here is to have a proper cleaning so you can minimize the amount of bacteria in there, ideally sterilize it, but even if it's impossible to sterilize it, it doesn't matter because the key is these exit portals, 
Most of the time it's at the end of the route. Sometimes there's some additional side portals. But as long as you clean the inside of the canal completely and then you fill it so that it doesn't get reinfected, so that that, sp that space is gone, then you may ask what happens with this infection, right? right. <laughs> so do we remove this infection through the tooth or not? We don't need to because, again, once the source of the bugs are gone, this infection at the end of the root is no different than this infection on the side of the gums. All right? Body can get rid of this. Okay. Now, occasionally, occasionally, some of the species of bacteria that might get through here might be able to be self-sustaining and therefore um, the infection may not go away. Or you may have developed a little cyst, which is a, um, a sac that may have a little bit of a fibrous, kind of a, a difficult uh, membrane for the body to penetrate. So that may not go away. In those cases, that's when you do what, an apicoectomy or apical surgery, where we actually reflect the gum, go back there and remove this space, and also remove the end of the root for a few millimeters, where most of these little ramifications are. And by doing that, and then we put in a plug from the other end up. And almost like a cork in a bottle, we kind of cork any potential remaining bacteria that's in here inside the root. Because that's the key point. As long as the stuff is inside the root, it doesn't matter. It's no different than the bacteria that's inside the mouth. Okay? We're not, no one's making an argument that you have to sterilize your mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Because in fact, that bacteria that's inside the mouth is necessary and it's a part of our metabolism. So once that's done, then this source is gone and the abscess is taken care of by the body and it goes away. Now, this conventional root canal therapy can address the problem of this infection 90, 95% of the time, if not even higher. Great. The key here is to have good techniques and good skills to get in there and get rid of the bacteria, use a lot of disinfectants and good irrigation, and not introduce any more bacteria during this process by having good um, kind of um, isolation during the root canal. So that's really the key point of uh, root canal therapy. And uh, for those people who say, is root canal therapy safe? Absolutely, it is safe because this process has been validated through a ton of research. The other argument that I hear all the time is people say, well, it's a dead thing. Why do you keep a dead thing? And where in the body do you keep a dead thing around? What people have misunderstanding, including physicians who go on talking about this, is they don't understand the meaning of dead tissue, okay? okay. If you think about it, your enamel, your natural normal enamel would be considered a dead tissue. There's no cells in it, there's nothing, right? Mm -hmm. We have it in our body, right? We use it. Or your nail beyond the nail bed, your hair, uh, that's your whole outer layer of, of epidermis is all dead tissue. So the idea of, well, where in the body do you keep anything that's dead is just not true, okay? okay. And don't forget, the tooth, even though it's had a root canal, still contains live tissue in its cementum, which is a part of the tooth. It's not part of the bone. Cementum is attached to the tooth. Okay. So that is still a live organ even though it's had a root canal. And sometimes when we use these examples to explain things to patients, such as, well, we're gonna go in there and we're gonna kill the tooth, then it creates these misunderstandings that lead into these further misunderstandings that end up causing problems for uh, people who are trying to actually save their teeth to think that they're saving a dead tooth. Um, oftentimes the use of the word dead or alive is based on the response of the tooth to temperature and we say it's dead in a colloquial way that it doesn't respond to temperature. Yes, it doesn't. Actually, teeth don't respond to temperature. Uh, they only respond to pain. pain. Temperature causes pain. But that's a whole different argument. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> All right, so was that, so tell me what area of this uh, is, makes sense, doesn't make sense to you at this point that we can maybe elaborate on. But the point, overall point here is that root canal therapy is the set of skills and procedure and concepts that have been developed to deal with the disease of the root canal, okay? okay. So having your root canal is probably just poor termage. And the goal of root canal therapy is to prevent infection at the apex, okay? okay. Uh, the goal of endodontics, which is the whole field 
that deals as a part of it with root canal therapy mm -hmm. is to deal with the diseases of the dental pulp and hopefully prevent them. So that's the main key thing. Preventing dental pulp disease is another whole part of endodontics. Our job as endodontists is to remove the critical burden of a constant source of bacteria from the top by removing it, okay. uh, by removing the source until the body can do the healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those holi holistic folks out there who say that this doesn't happen, usually the proof is in the pudding. If yes, in those 5% of the cases, if it doesn't happen, if you still have persistent pain and problem with the tooth, that's the point in which you can either do the apicoectomy, which is a surgical approach to get rid of the problem, or then remove the tooth. But that doesn't mean that in the 95% of teeth that can be saved with a conventional root canal um, with this technique, that you should remove the tooth. It's kind of like saying, look, we know that in 5% of the cases, it doesn't work. So in 95% of teeth, people have to pull their teeth in fear of the 5%. It's kind of like saying, you know, probably suicide is the best uh, option for avoiding death in the long run. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say. Does that answer the question for you in a long-winded way? Yes, it does. All right, I hope you're not too confused. Anyway, for uh, Real World Dental, I'm Ali and Sam. You were joined here by Grace. Uh, and uh, Grace and I say, uh, let's save some teeth.